1 Corinthians 16, verse 10. You get your place, say amen. amen. All right. Verse number 10, Paul says, Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desire him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the Lord, Quit ye like men, be strong. Let all th your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints, that you submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. He said there that the house of Stephanus have addicted themselves to the ministry. As far as I know, I don't know that that word's used anywhere else in the scripture. I don't think it is that as far as I know, I can't find it anywhere else. The word addicted, that word addiction has taken on a very negative connotation in our society. But here it's a positive word. They've addicted themselves. They've got addicted to the ministry. And according to this, in this passage, an addiction can be a good thing if you're addicted to the right thing. Amen? And that's what I want to talk about tonight is being addicted to something good, the right kind of addiction, or being hooked on a good thing, however you want to say it. I don't even know what the, my title is tonight. But, uh, but being an addict, being a, a Christian addict. Amen. I ain't even got a title tonight. But I used to be an addict. I used to be hooked on drugs and I used to be hooked on alcohol. I know what an addict is when people start talking about being an addict and being a junkie. My mom used to call them dope fiends. I used to think somebody hooked on drugs but somebody had, had teeth, these fangs and hair on their knuckles and all that stuff. Mom used to have us terrified of it. And it really is that bad, like werewolves and vampires. It's worse than that, worse. And, uh, and now that God saved me, and I'm a former addict. I'm not an addict anymore. Uh, I'm a different kind of addict. I'm hooked on the Lord Jesus. But now that, I'm, now that I'm saved and God's cleaned my life up, now I get around somebody that's drinking and I hate the smell of it. I can't stand it. It makes me sick. I can't stand it. You ever, if you ever get around somebody, if you used to be a drunk and you get around somebody that's drinking now, it'll make you want to puke. I ain't kidding. You know, a bunch of guys just going around carrying, used to everything I used to do, I did one-handed because the other hand had a beer in it and a cigarette. Everything I did with one hand, I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't do nothing with two hands, nothing, because that other hand had a beer in it and a cigarette. And I like saying that, bragging. I'm ashamed of that. I'm ashamed my kids even hear that, that their daddy used to live like that, swigging and sweat, swirling and swigging on an old nasty beer can. I'm, I'm serious. And I was hooked on that mess, awful, and get so sick. I mean, dog drunk, puking, throwing up. And while you're just throwing up, you couldn't wait to get another one. Now, you're hooked when you get like that, brother. That's awful, brother. And get, I mean, get hooked on pills and get hooked on them and hooked on them and, and, and just can't wait to take more of them and smoke dope and you can get hooked on that. I don't care how legal they make it. Marijuana is just as bad as liquor, alcohol, or pills or anything else. I don't care. Anything that all alters your mentality is a drug. By the way, did you know the word, the Greek word for pharmaceuticals is the same word as witchcraft? Did you know that? Yes. Same word. Same Greek word for, for pharmaceuticals is the exact same word for witchcraft. Yeah. How about that? How about that? The exact same word. So when you take a pill to get a buzz, yeah. it's the exact same thing as messing around in the spirit world, son. You're messing with demons and witchcraft. 
you're messing with your mind and getting your mind out there in the spirit world and them demons and witches and swords, them, them evil spirits are messing around with that, that altar in your consciousness. Amen. That's dangerous, man. Amen. You're messing with stuff you don't need to be messing with. You mess your mind up doing that. Yeah. I don't care who you are. And you know, nowadays, they call it hillbilly heroin. Nowadays, people's hooked on, hooked on prescription pills because it's so legal and it's so easy to hide. All you got to do is go to the doctor and say, I stuck my toe. They'll write your prescription. And everybody, well, it's all right because the doctor says, I need it. It ain't no different, brother, than drinking beer and drinking liquor. It alters your consciousness. And if you don't need it, you don't need to be taking it. Man told me one time, said the first time I ever used crack, he said, the first time he smoked it, he said, that's what I've been looking for my whole life. But he said, you know what the next thought was? He said, I never could get it again after that first hit. He said, I spent years trying to get that high again. I said, I never could get it. Years. Listen. And he said, I, I met this woman one time. She was rich. And she told me this. She told me this. She, me and this other guy, she said, I used to follow my son. She's a rich woman now, not a poor woman. And she said, my son's stuff kept getting gone. She said, I couldn't figure out where it was going. And finally, she said, I followed him. And he was going down to this little place called Little, little Berlin over there in Hickory, North Carolina. It was the projects. I mean, the bad side of town, wasn't it, Debbie? I mean, you didn't want to even drive through there in the daylight. And she said, he would drive up. He drove a BMW. And he would drive up and he'd take his shirt off. Them designer clothes. I mean, that Tommy Hilfiger stuff. And he'd take on those fossil watches and those high dollar stuff and hand it out to one and then they'd hand him a, a rock. And he'd drive down the hill and smoke it. Smoke it up like that and he'd be gone in 30 minutes. And she said, I watched him get rid of his stereo, his TV, his DVD player. She said, I watched him. I followed him one day. And she said, he pulled off a $300 pair of cowboy boots. I bought him for his birthday. Hand him out the window and pulled off his jacket, his, North, his, his leather jacket, Brother Heath. She said, I watched him pull it off and hand it out the window to some little old teenage black boy. And they handed him some drugs and drove off down the hill. Said it, she said, I believe he would have pulled his heart out and pulled his soul out of his body and give it to him. She said, I've never seen anything like it. My own son, she said, I've cried my heart out. And she said, I've almost died. She said, there's nothing I can do but shut him out of my life and turn him off. That's what it'll do to you. Amen. You can get addicted to stuff and lose your life over it. But here's what I want to talk about tonight is being addicted to something good. Amen. Something good. The Bible said, great peace have they which love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. Greater is he that's in, within me than he that is within the world. Now they say that an addict has compulsive use. And they say they crave the substance. They crave it. Listen, brother, I'd like to see God's people get that way. Where they crave God and they crave the Lord Jesus. And they want to be, uh, they want to be, have the Lord Jesus. And they, they crave the substance. They say that they have the three elements is reinforcements, craving, and habit. Craving the substance the person is addicted to. Some people's built up an immunity to church and they don't want to go no more. And they've lost that buzz. They don't have that buzz anymore. Yeah. Amen. And brother, the craving is gone. And they've built up a tolerance. They don't have a, they've built up a tolerance to church and they don't have it anymore. The craving is a psychological need for the substance and the triggered effect. And they have those withdrawal symptoms. And people have done that in their spiritual life. And, and then they say there's the craving and then there's the habit and the, which refers to an automatic and a compulsive pattern of behavior to where people just go ahead and use it and they keep using and they keep using whether they feel anything or not. It'd be good if God's people had a habit. I mean, the brother, listen, whether you feel it or whether it does anything necessarily for you every time or not, just go ahead and go to church. Just go ahead and pay your tithes. Just go ahead and do what's right. Whether you necessarily feel anything or not. Well, it just don't, I just don't feel, it just don't feel good like it used to. So what? Go ahead and do it. Amen. The Bible said, yield your bodies. Once a person gets addicted and gets rolling, it can be hard to stop. The good thing I like about that is once you get started, once you get addicted to, Je addicted to Jesus and addicted to church and get addicted, once you get, I tell people all the time, Brother Shannon, once you get in there, you just go to church for six months, go every time the doors is open, pay your tithes, go to church, get involved, go to Sunday school, go to visitation, then it won't be so easy just to fall out. Right. Right. Then if you miss church one time, it'll be harder to fall out. 
Because you're so used to going. It's a part of your life. Amen. Amen. This going to church, hit and miss, it won't work for you, brother. You've got to get in there and you've got to get, let it be a part of who you are. Amen. Amen. I want to say first of all about being an addict is number one, an addict will pay any price Amen. to get the substance he's using. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Ain't it funny that people that love the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll do anything. You know what? You know what I hear people say? They'll say, well, there's some people come here to church one time when I first came here and they came three or four times and liked it real good, liked our church, and then we went to visit them. And they live right here across town, not far. And just, I mean, right down the road here, just a couple miles. And you know what they said? They said, we'll start going to church right down here because it's closer. And I thought, well, okay, if that's, that's all right, but it don't really make sense. I'd go to the church where God wanted me to go. I said, we got people that go, <laughs> come to our church that live in Baxley, and, and we, got, we got members that live in McCray, we got people that live in Surrency, we got people that live all over the place. Brother, I ain't got nothing to do with how close it is. You don't go to church because it's close. You go to church because you crave it. You know what I've noticed about people that's addicted? Man, they'll do anything to get it. I, brother, when I, back when I, before I got saved, I was a drunk, brother, and I'd do anything. Listen, we lived in a dry, I don't know what, the, I don't understand this, but we lived in a town that was dry. I don't think the county was, but I think the city was. We went to the city as a township. You couldn't buy beer, but you could buy liquor. Isn't that weird? But we wasn't old enough to buy liquor. We was just teenagers. We couldn't buy liquor, but we could, we could buy beer. Back then, you could buy beer if you was 18, but you couldn't buy liquor. So we'd all pile up in the car. And we'd drive down the road to the next town, and we could all buy beer. We'd all bail out and go buy beer. But the liquor store's right down the street from where I lived. But we couldn't buy liquor. So we'd all pile up in the car. We'd all pitch in together and go buy a case of beer. And we'd do whatever it took. Or we'd go get a friend's older brother to go right down the street to the liquor store. We'd do whatever it took. Hey, brother, our age didn't phase us, brother. We got it, man. I'm telling you, we'd go to parties and bring a big old tub. And whatever you brought, we'd all pour it in there. I forget what we called that. It was a mess. But there's a name for it. And we'd all drink. It looked like black gunk. I'm telling you, we got something run out of a radiator. We'd all drink and get stoned. You know what that is? Paying any price, whatever it takes. Hey, man, what'd you bring? I don't care. Pour it in there. Just drink it. Amen. Hey, brother, listen. If you ever get addicted to the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll pay any price. Hey, just because you live 10 miles out of town won't phase you one bit. Right. Romans 6, 19 said, I speak after the manner of men because of the firmness of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members' service to uncleanness and iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' service to righteousness unto holiness. Listen, ever, almost every church we've ever went to, we've had to drive at least 30 minutes. At least. Listen, we used to go to church and it was, it was 40, I think it was 44 or 45 miles one way. We never missed one service. Never. Never one service that I can recall that we ever missed. And I don't think we was ever late. I ain't bragging. We was addicted, man. That was our church. That's where we're going. Whatever it took, whatever it took, Jack, we was going. Amen. We didn't miss church. We did whatever we had to do to get to church. And it was 40, 45, 44, 45 miles away. That's a long ways. I mean, we hit the interstate, son. And I mean, we put her on cruise and let her rip. And we got to church. I mean, that's where the food was, brother. That's where we was getting our, our plate filled. That's where we was getting our, our well, little red wagon loaded, son. That's where the preacher was preaching and the choir was singing. And that's we was addicted, brother. That's where we was getting what we needed. Somebody that's addicted and hooked, they'll do whatever it takes to get what they need. An addict will walk a hundred miles to get a fix. That's why addicts will steal. They'll rob, kill, steal. They'll do anything. Secondly, an addict will go to the place where the substance is sold. They'll go wherever, wherever the place is at. That's why the Bible said, Hebrews 10, 25 said, not forsaking the sin of yourselves together. You know, these, these weirdos that say you don't have to go to church. These weirdos, these crazy people, you don't have to go to church to, you know, to, to be saved and to grow in the Lord. They're weirdos, man. They say they know the Bible, but they don't. 
Because that Bible says, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together, the apostles went to church, assembled on the first day of the week. Jesus Christ went to the synagogue every week of his life when he was here. All the apostles went to church. And listen, if they did it, we ought to do it. They didn't say, Jesus didn't say, I shed my blood and died. And you don't have to go to church to sit around the house and do nothing. The Bible said he bled and died for the church. He said, he said, on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against me. Amen. He gave his life for the church. Amen. So that's where I'm going to go, to the church. Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I ain't got no confidence that people won't go to church. I've been saved for 35 years. And I've never had confidence in, but I love them, but I don't have any confidence in people that don't go to church because number one, they ain't going to support the church. They're not going to take care of the church. They're hitchhikers. They're not going to support the church. They're not going to put any money in it. They're deadbeats. They're not going to support it. They're not going to tithe. They're not going to take care of the church. Right? I know people don't like that kind of preaching. That's why they're not here. These kind of people don't like it. But if they get hooked real good, they'd love the church. You know, when I was dating Debbie, I was hooked. That's why I was always at her house all the time. Her mom and daddy did. Her mama liked me, or I think she's pretending to like me. But her daddy never did like me. You know when her daddy started liking me? When Candace was born. He never did like me. All them years, Brother D, he never did like me until she was born, and all of a sudden, he started liking me. Can you believe that? After all those years, he tolerated me for a million years, and then she was born, bam, I was his buddy. It took that many years. A little girl came along finally. But my God, it took you long enough. And then he died. A few years later, he died. Bless his heart. Ain't that pitiful? But you know what? They didn't stop me from showing up at their house. I went over there on Thanksgiving, went over at Christmas, went over on birthdays, cookouts, family get together. This. I was like, oh, got it. Here he is again. <laughs> them redneck brothers didn't like me. None of them liked me. The brother in laws didn't like me. Cousins didn't like me. Made everybody uncomfortable. I hate it. I'm going over for because of her. I was hooked. Hooked, brother. Hooked, I say. Amen. Amen. I mean, brother, hooked, Jack. I mean, first time I ever saw her, man, I was like, it really was like on them cartoons where you just lose your head and you start spinning around and around. I mean, I got, I got, I got dizzy headed and I really did. I got a buzz, man. I still got it. Hooked. I was all jacked up. Still am. An addict will go to the place where the substance is. Hey, by the way, when I was dating her, I didn't go to somebody else's house. I wasn't talking to somebody else, brother. I was talking to her. I walked right by all them brothers that hated me, all them other people. I just walked right on mine, straight in there where she's at. Hey, babe, what's going on? What's up? My hair look good today? If she had seen me then, now like she did then, I don't know. She might have said, uh. <laughs> but anyway, I was hooked. You understand what I'm saying? People need to get a good dose of Jesus, brother. Thirdly, an addict has one thing on his mind at all times. One thing. And the Bible say, it tells us that Paul said, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Philippians 3.8. You know what? An addict has one thing on his mind all the time. If you've ever been an addict, thank God most of you hadn't. An addict is like this. You don't want to do nothing unless, you, unless you've got that substance. In other words... You think you can't enjoy doing nothing unless you've got that buzz of whatever that is you're taking. That's true. If you're popping pills or if you're shooting up or if you're drinking, you can't enjoy a concert or a ball game or a picnic or going fishing or going hunting or doing nothing. You think you can't enjoy nothing unless you've got the, the assistance of that buzz. Is that not right? You think you've got to be buzzing to do anything. That's the control it has over you. Can I tell you something tonight? 
That's the way God's people ought to be about the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to have Him on our minds at all times. And when we do, brother, it wouldn't be a very hard time to witness and tell others about Him. That's why when I was telling you about dating her, it wasn't very hard for me to tell other people about it. Maybe I got tired of hearing it. Go on. Go on. Tell somebody else about her. You follow me? That's right. It ain't hard to tell, hey, it ain't hard to tell people about your grandkids Amen. when you're in love with them. That's right, brother. A man loves what, a man talks about what he loves. What, what, where, where your treasure is, where your heart is. Yeah. I was telling a preacher on the phone the other day how pretty, how pretty our grandbaby is. I said, man, I said, that's the prettiest baby I've ever seen. He said, yeah, ours was like that too. I said, no, like this it wasn't. <laughs> I told him, I said, she wasn't, I said, she wasn't pretty like this one. <laughs> and I'd have made him mad. I don't care. I said, send him a picture. I'll show you, brother. I said, I'll fight you over it. You know why that is? Because I love this one. I don't love his. <laughs> I'm hooked on that one. That's the point, see? If you're hooked on Jesus, glory to God, you'll talk about him and you'll love him and you'll worship him. We need to get hooked on him. Number four, an addict does not care what others think about his behavior. You ever notice somebody's hooked on, on drugs or alcohol? They don't, they don't care how they dress or how they look. They could care less. They don't care other people look at them and they say, Look how that guy's dressed. Or look how he acts. That guy's, he's acting weird. But the drunk don't care. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Acts, they went, they did all kinds of weird stuff. And they, they arrested them. And they said, these men are ignorant and unlearned. What are we going to do with them? And they beat them and turned them loose. And they said, y'all shouldn't be speaking in this name anymore. And they turned them loose. And the Bible said they went out and rejoiced and praised the Lord. They went out and <laughs> kept on preaching. Amen. You know why? It's hooked. It's hooked. Couldn't stop it. You may tell you something. You can take somebody and do this intervention stuff. And I guess that's good if you catch somebody when they've hit bottom. But if a man ain't hit bottom, you can do intervention. It ain't going to do no good. That person's got to hit rock bottom and be ready for help. Intervention ain't going to work. That man's got to be at a point in his life where he's hit bottom and said, I got to help myself. I, I got to get help. God can't even help you until you've got... That's like repentance. Until you decide and you admit you're going to hell and you're a sinner, you can't get saved. You can repeat a prayer and it won't even save you. Amen? But an addict, somebody that's, somebody that's an addict, they don't care what anybody thinks. When you get out here on the street and start knocking on doors and you get out on the street and passing that track and start preaching on the street... You'll find out what your flesh thinks about you. Amen. After a while, when the, you get the flesh beat down, you can do it because you get to where you don't care what. You ever been around a drunk before and he gets real good and drunk? You know what they'll say? I'm drunk. No, here, who knows it? That's the way we ought to be about Jesus. You ever, you ever been, you ever been to a, most of you had, and I'm glad you had, some of us older ones may have. You go to a dance hall. And two or three people's out there dancing around that can dance. And then after a while, about an hour, hour and a half into the night, it starts filling up. And people, people that can't dance start getting out there because they've had a few drinks. And it starts getting ugly. You know what that is? They start getting drunk. But they don't care. That's what, listen, you know what the Bible said? Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. But... Be filled with the Spirit. There's some things about being drunk. The Bible said we should liken it to the Christian life. An addict does not care what others think about him. Number five, an addict will only hang around with other addicts. Kids, you know what the Lord wants for your life? He wants you to be addicted to Jesus. And He wants you to only hang around with others that's addicted to Him. He don't want you going to worldly places and hanging out in worldly places. and He don't want you hanging around with other young people and going to worldly concerts and places that's wicked and ungodly. He don't want you doing that. He said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And if, if you were of the world, the world would have loved his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. 1 John 1, 7 said, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanseth us from all sin. An addict will only hang around with other addicts. 
I can go down through here anywhere in town, me and Brother Sam or Brother Ted, any of us, and find anybody that's a, a junkie. And they won't want to hang around with us unless we start jabbing a needle in us and sitting around there talking to them. Then they'll pal around with us. They don't want to hang around a preacher. They don't want to hang around a preacher and a deacon. You walk down through there with your Bible and sit down with them and start talking to them. They'll talk to you for a few minutes, but they want to go get a fix. I guarantee you we can go to the nearest nightclub, go to Vidalia, somewhere like that, and carry our Bibles in and sit down. You talk about an oddball. You talk about getting run out of a place. What's them people doing? What are they? They only want other drunks. Number six, an addict cannot hide it no matter how much he tries. Paul said in Galatians 6, 17, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Once you become an addict, you can't hide it. Amen, you can try to hide it, but you can't. Amen. You know, when the police arrest a, a junkie, they know what to look for. They can tell if a man's a user. They can look in your eyes and look at your arms, your legs, your toes. Doctors know what to look for. They can tell just like that. And i tell you what else. Another user knows what to look for. You believe this or not, people, and I ain't joking with you. I can, I, can, I can spot another drunk a mile away, another pothead. I, I ain't smoked pot in, how long has it been, Debbie? Three months probably. But, uh, no, nah, I'm kidding. Last night? No, 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 it's been, it's been so many years, I don't even remember. It's been 30-some years. But I could smell that stuff. I bet you five miles away if somebody lit one up, I could smell it. And I could see somebody walk up. We saw somebody not long ago somewhere. In a grocery store somewhere, I said, look at that girl. Boy, she's burnt to a crisp, ain't she? You see them eyes, can't you? I guarantee you, buddy. You ever smoked it, brother? Brother Heath, you can spot it, can't you? That's another thing about it. One addict can spot another addict. And you know what that is? We ought to reach out to them people. If we're, a, we're former addicts and former drunks, we ought to use that as a way to reach out to them people. Amen. We ought to reach out to them. Because they cannot hide the fact that they're an addict. We're addicted to the Lord Jesus and we can't hide it. We ought not try to hide it. Number six, number seven, an addict will make a fool of himself. Paul said we're fools for Christ's sake, but we are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you're strong. Addicts sometimes will make a fool of himself. We're fools for Christ. Amen. Sometimes when you're a drunk man, I'll make a fool out of himself. You know, I think, a, I think a Christian ought to make a fool out of himself for the Lord every now and then. As far as the world's concerned, that's why it's good for us to go out passing out tracks and get on the street once in a while and just do something out of the ordinary, something that the community thinks is crazy. I think we ought to. I think we need to do that. I think it's good for our flesh because we don't need to, we don't need to conform to this world. We don't need to conform to the world and be pleasant to the world. We need to stick out a little bit. We need to look unusual and look different. The Bible said we're peculiar people. We're different. We're supposed to come out from among the world. An addict will make a fool of himself. An addict will do things that's so unusual and so peculiar like that boy was telling me about a while ago. I've seen it over the years. I've seen people do some strange things. That, that, uh, and I've done it before. I've done things back, back before I got saved. When I was using I used to say, man, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm doing things I never thought I would do. And as a Christian, we ought to do that. We ought to do things that we thought that we wouldn't have the power to do, but God will empower us to do it. Nextly, let me say, an addict thinks he can do anything. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. In Philippians 4.13. You know, a man, that, a man that's uh, really, really jacked up on drugs or on alcohol, he'll try anything. Won't he? He'll try anything. That a normal person would just, all right, you go home, you watch some of these videos with these, on YouTube, some of these kids riding these bicycles off the top of a house into a swimming pool or something. You tell me them guys ain't on something. They'll try, they'll try anything. You take, you take, Paul said, I can do all things. That's why we get hooked up with the Lord. We get full of the Spirit of God. There's nothing we can't do. There's nothing in this world that God's people can't do if we get in that spirit realm and get spirit filled, there's nothing we can't do. Right. And the last thing I want to say is, the best thing about being an addict is being a 
addicted to Jesus is, an addict will never fully get over being a real addict. They say once you've ever been addicted to something, it's always, there's always that, that's always in your mind or in your physiological makeup that you could always fall back and you could always fall off the wagon. That's always in your, your genes or whatever that, um, that it could happen. And it, there's always that temptation, you might say, because, you know, you, you take, for instance, one person could, one person could drink a beer and never bother them. The next man can drink a beer and he's an alcoholic the rest of his life. Some people like that. And so if the man that was an alcoholic got saved and never drank again for 40 years, someday he might get out of church. He might pick one up and start drinking again. So what I'm saying is, if you get addicted to Jesus and you ever get saved and you ever get in a real good church and you ever get you a good dose, it'll change your life and you'll never be the same. Amen. You'll never be the same. It'll, ne it'll change you. It'll change you and you'll never... I, I, I've al always said this. If you ever get in the spirit-filled life and get in a good church, you'll never be satisfied going back to a dead church. You never will. Right. Unless you're just backslid and you just don't want it and you want to live in sin somewhere doing something you know you ain't supposed to do. Amen, but you'll never be happy. Right. You'll never get over it. It'll change you. You'll never be the same. Never be the same. If you ever get really get a good taste of it. And uh, I ain't always been what I should be or always what I want to be. But I can promise you and guarantee you this. I ain't what I used to be. Amen, God's done something in my life, brother. Amen, brother. God has definitely done something in my life. It will have such a profound effect on you that you will never, ever ever forget it. Let me tell you something. I've been saved all these years and to this day I can remember church services and different times in my life where the Holy Spirit's come down and touched me, touched my family. I remember services where I preached and services where we sang and just camp meetings, revival. I remember one time where me and Debbie was praying in our bedroom and the Holy Ghost came down. It was like the day of Pentecost, brother. I ain't never, I'll never forget that till, till I die. You remember that? Things like that you don't forget. When you get addicted to Jesus, you get you a dose of it, it'll change you. And, and times like that, you never forget. You never forget it. And when the devil comes along and says, well, it ain't real, you just stop and you start re rewinding and you start saying, what about that? How could that not have been real? That wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't imagination. I mean, that wasn't something I made up. That wasn't just a, you know, I didn't make all that up on my own. But it'll change your life. If you just get hooked and get addicted to the spirit-filled life, it'll change your life. You'll never be the same. I'm not saying you have to do everything the way I do it or the next guy or the next woman. If you'll get hooked. I remember when I got saved, I remember... I remember thinking this. I remember thinking I was hooked on alcohol and drugs and now I'm hooked on something different. Listen to this. You'll think it's crazy. I might have told you this, but you just have to put up with it. Would to God that you bear with me. That's what Paul said. I, 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 I was real hooked on heavy metal, rock and roll and all that stuff. And I remember I started throwing that stuff. Well, I was throwing, throwing it out the window one night, riding down the road, pitching it out the window. Cassettes. Y'all don't know what that is, kids. It's tapes. Used to put in a tape player in your car, and throwing them out the window, and I was list had the Aerosmith and all that stuff. I was throwing them out the window, and this guy told me he said, "Come by the house, I got something to give you," and he gave me a tape. And it was Happy Goodmans. I didn't know who the Happy Goodmans was, and I stuck that thing in my tape player, and they started singing, "What a name, the name of Jesus, wonderful to hear." Man, bam! That hit my heart, and I said, "I'm hooked." I start, tears start flowing down my, down my face, Brother Sam. I said, I'm hooked. Amen. I love it. I love it. And I, think that, and I think somebody else gave me another one of the inspirations. And I, and I mean, I was hooked. I said, that's, that's it. I, that's, that's my crowd. That's my music. And I've been hooked ever since. And, uh, 
And, and what, I, what I'm saying is I, I turned loose of that world and from being hooked on that stuff and I got hooked on something else. If you got to be hooked on something, at least get hooked on the right thing. Amen. Amen. If you got to have an obsession, at least don't let it be Calvin Klein. Let it be Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's stand tonight.